We got the best dark plasma cutter here. We're going to do an official review. You guys who know me know how my reviews go down. This is going to be an actual review. So, one of the reasons you never buy a knockoff, unless you just got one cut to make and that's all you need, I would not spend my money on a knockoff product. You can see these reviews are damning. Um, not all of them are this bad. Some people buy this thing, they use it one time, then they set it on the shelf for 10 years, and that's what the manufacturer is hoping on. That's the customer that these people want to sell to. If you're going to actually use this thing, you're not for them. This ain't going to be a good fit. Even if it does work great, what are you going to do when this company disappears and you need to buy consumables? Now you're stuck with this machine and you can't get parts for it. So it's kind of best to stick with something that's been around for a while and isn't going anywhere anytime soon. They asked me to review the product. I'm not trying to sell this thing. I'm here to review it. It says 50 amps. I highly doubt this thing's pushing 50 amps. I don't see it. So we've got an amp meter hooked up. We're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. If it pulls 50 amps, I'll be impressed. This is a pretty thick little piece of metal here. Probably every bit of 12 millimeter. saw 44 amps on there guys the cooling fan is a little meager I don't know it's, it's pushing some air I'll give it that but it just doesn't seem loud enough to me all of my equipment is named brand and it's so loud you got to turn it off when you ain't using it just to shut it up Figured that out. That's the damn thing on AC. Forty two amps wrong. Try to do some gouging with this thing. See how it gouges. Myself, but it gabs. Let me uh, what gabs that right? Now. This is a jib. I probably shouldn't have tore that up so badly. <laughs> I kind of need that. <clears throat> that. So it's like a $250 plasma cutter, but uh. People are saying they don't last. So I don't see how I can endorse it if it's just going to burn up. I'll let you guys know how it goes in the comments. I'm going to keep this thing. I'm going to use it. I do like the tips. I mean, I can't just beat them to hell for no reason. I do really like the tip of this thing. I hate my new phone. It don't know how to focus on nothing. Yeah, I don't know about these tips. Well, that was 50 amps though, so it just seems like everybody else is using copper for this part. So according to this, we've seen 44 amps maximum and 42 on that last cut. Now, some people in the reviews reported getting two of these machines only to have them both break 
One guy said it's very hard to get the consumables out of them. He, he, I'll, you'll have to look in the comments yourself if it doesn't appear, but he mentioned it was hard for him to get these. And what happens when this company goes under? You know, and they change their name. Are you still going to be able to get these consumables? I've been using the Forney, the Forney Easy Weld. This is what it looks like inside of them. I've got one here that I burnt the handle up on and then tried to turn it into an EDM machine. It's got one cooling fan. This is a high speed cooling fan though. You can actually see by the toggle of the magnet. You can see how powerful that magnet toggle is. Um, the Forney I can vouch for. You can, it's easy to get parts. And I've used it for a long time. And the only reason why I got another one is because I burnt the handle up. I got an electrode stuck in there. And this part here costs a lot of money. But what I do now, what I have here is a titanium plasma cutter from Harbor Freight. But I purchased a hypertherm gun handle. And what you do is you tear this thing open and you turn the air all the way up. Because uh, these junky ones are, are very uh, low air pressure. They're like 50 to 60 PSI. So as you can see, this one here is only running at 60. Most um, high grade plasma cutters are gonna run in the 80 to 100 PSI range. I run this plasma table, which is running a 45 amp hypotherm at 100 PSI. Now this hypotherm plasma cutter that I have over here is a freaking workhorse. I've had it for five years and it's been working nonstop. It's 45 amps, a very robust machine. And the cooling fan on it sounds like a Ferrari. So for this thing to be 50 amps and, you know, have this tiny little, it's just not made for a, a shop. If you just got a couple of cuts to do, I guess it'd be okay. After the reviews I seen, I do not re recommend buying this. I just, I can't. There ain't no way after what I've read. We've got the welder here that uh, we're gonna try next. Unfortunately, they didn't send the TIG equipment with it. But um, that's what I got to say about plasma cutters. I know the Forney's a good deal. I've been using that thing forever for my thicker stuff. This is only uh, 35 amps here. This right here is a 45 amper. This is like a thousand dollar plasma cutter. <clears throat> I think I paid like 700 to a thousand dollars or something for that thing, guys. That one over there was like two to three thousand or something insane. That's the air compressor that runs it. So I know a little bit about plasma cutters. I don't own an oxyacetylene, but I should probably get one because I've been doing a lot of welding lately. I turned into a damn welder somehow. So for you guys out there who actually need a plasma cutter to run a business or something, this is what I did. I bought that Titan for the 800 bucks and I bought this Stinger. You guys need to go check this guy out. I can't leave a link in the description because YouTube will hit me for session ends and I don't want to deal with that. But this guy sells these Stingers and he tells you how to, um, well, that ain't the one I want. He tells you how to hook them up to your machine also if you email him. He tells you how to get inside and what pressure it's got to be at. Highly recommend this dude right here. So that's what you do. You go out and you buy an $800 to $1,000 plasma cutter. And then you buy this hypotherm stinger. Um, see there, it says Fitz Harbor Freight Titanium. Uses hypotherm parts. Sony parts, man. Sony parts. <laughs> So essentially, I got an additional plasma cutter with the power of a $2,500 unit for 800 bucks. And I have used this thing extensively. I've used it in the field. It's been out in the oil fields and everything.